Hi and welcome to BNG. My name is Jude Chisebe. Today we'll put a spotlight on Nurture, a development finance institution by the Department of Human Settlements. In line with the NDP goal of densification of our cities, Nurture finances these loans to developers and contractors who in turn build high density and affordable housing. One of the developments being financed by Nurture is Linden Lane, a rental apartment block in Hroblas Park in the west of Johannesburg. We went to go meet the developer. My name is Ivan Pretorius. Um, I'm a professional civil engineer by qualification. I um, started a company called Ailey Roads in 2008 uh, with the primary focus of undertaking property and residential developments. Our first development was successfully completed um, a few years after 2008 and it was financed through Nurture. Um, subsequent to that we've grown in leaps and bounds and Ailey Roads is now a holding company which contains internally a, our own architects, civil engineers, construction team, um, our own professional bodies as well. And uh, basically we do a full turnkey for residential developments and other private types of projects, which include the sourcing of the projects, the fundraising, the construction, the designs, and the actual end management under our rental company called Alley Roads Management and Rental uh, Services. I think what we've learned from the implementation of this project Linen Lane is that uh, our direction for change of specs around semi-face bricks, face bricks internally, epoxy walkways um, and the upkeeping and the general monitoring and management of our projects has really paid off. Nurture has been instrumental in our growth. Um, we started with working with Nurture on a project in Kempton Park. It was a small project, 34 units, and they, they took a bold move. Um, we were starting up and they financed us. Since then we've done quite a substantial amount of projects and we generally get our finance approved through Nurture based on our track record with anything between two to three months. Linen Lane is a 161 development uh, located in the Princess Crossing area, Princess Holdings, and um, it consists of primarily two bedrooms. There's no three bedrooms because the two bedroom is the market we mainly focus on. Um, it's a three-story walk-up development and um, it's gated fully secured with uh, the rental focus um, for industry. Basically they can come here, feel comfortable that they're living in a secure environment, feel secure that their children have a place to play, open environments, um, they're not, the children are not playing on streets, they're playing in a secure area, the people feel comfortable. It's a community development program that actually allows people to feel value add in their lives. Funding for Linden Lane was a threefold approach where um, the three, st three stages of funding consisted of the GPF or the Gauteng Provincial uh, Fund, Gauteng Partnership Fund, providing a, s a small portion of equity funding, Nurture providing an offtake uh, for the construction portion, and NetBank Affordable Housing providing the rental funding for the development. So how it works is you raise the funding to do the construction through Nurture and GPF, and you finish the project, and then NetBank provides the rental finance over a period of time. Yeah, this looks awesome. You want to take a walk around and see everything? Okay. Take I'm going to take a few, a few pictures for, for our magazine. 100%, okay. that's perfect. Right. Where do you want to start? Nurture's reporting process is quite stringent, um, and so is their compliance. It's, 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 um, you have to follow the rules and regulations that they provide, but the nice part about it is they're there to help you every step of the way. Um, during the construction phase, there's monthly reports that have to be provided, not only on the finance, but also on the construction work that's taken place. So, and they also visit the sites regularly with you. So the involvement from Nurture is not only here's the money, do the development. It's here's the money, how can we grow you as a business? How can Nurture better develop you so that you're providing the right product to the community? The tenants' response to development has been very positive. There's a lot of uh, good movement, got a lot of good interest. There's always a snag here and there that has to be addressed with tenants and uh, additional needs that the tenants want and that they require. But we provide the basic requirements for a affordable housing development. And in general, 90-95% of your tenants are very comfortable with the product that you're providing them. Our company's main focus is Greensfields Developments. We love taking a vacant piece of land, rezoning it, raising the finance, implementing it, and seeing the project actually develop at the end of the day. The impact that we have in the community, I mean, if you take Linden Lane, for instance, it's a 50 million rand plus investment in the area. 
Um, and the total number of jobs that we actually create from that 50 million is in the order of between two and a half to 3,000 jobs created over a 12-month period. Um, so the job creation, the investment to the local communities, the investment to the local hardware stores is what we focus on. Um, and we try our very best to provide that to the everybody. Affordable housing includes rental units and units for ownership. Lily Field, the sectional title development in Midrand, also financed by Nurture, we paid them a visit. My name is George Chandler. I'm a consulting civil engineer. I started off with this company of mine about 35 years ago, doing mainly civil engineering work, specializing in a number of fields, among others, water purification, etc. Ten years ago, I decided that uh, there are more, better opportunities within the property development sphere. And I met up with a partner, Henri de Toué. We started forming relationships with other partners and we started buying up land with a view to developing that. Initially, we developed for the high end of the market because uh, for the same effort, you could uh, make the same kind of profit as opposed to doing a lot of smaller, cheaper developments. At this stage, uh, there's a good market in the affordable housing market. We had properties that were ideally suited for the affordable housing market, and uh, they were well situated, and uh, we had to modify them, get higher densities for them, and uh, that's the way we ended up in the affordable housing market. The challenges of working in the affordable housing sector are mainly centered around bank approvals for bonds. The people that apply for these bonds have difficulty in maintaining unblemished credit records. Unfortunately, this impacts on their applications. We find that often we have to resell a unit two and even three times before the buyer actually qualifies. I actually heard about Nurture at a conference that I attended where I met a colleague that worked for me a number of years ago and he was working with Nurture at that point in time. He introduced me to Nurture and I found that Nurture could possibly offer the exactly the right solution for our finance model that we required for our project. I then uh, engaged with Nurture and we started discussing over a period of weeks to months and we then eventually found uh, the right package for our project and then we commenced with um, finalizing the finance proposal. We encountered certain difficulties during the project which they were willing to assist us to address. Uh, we also uh, changed our development density from 40 units to 80 units per hectare which required additional funding. Uh, Nurture knew about this in the beginning and when the time was ready we then uh, approached them and that re refunding application went quite smoothly. We were satisfied with w the way that happened. Although the last two developers are quite established, Nurture also finances emerging developers. After the break we find out exactly who is eligible for this funding from Nurture. Welcome back to BNG. I'm with Mr. Cesar Quetta, CEO of Nurture. He tells us more about Nurture and what they do. How are you saying? What is your mandate as Nurture? Nurture's mandate it is to provide finance, particularly bridging finance, to developers, residential developers, and contractors that are active in the human settlement sector. We also provide finance to contractors that would provide community facilities like schools and clinics in the settlements that we are financing a development in. What kind of funding options does Nurture provide and to whom? Residential developers will provide project finance to produce affordable housing. And affordable housing in this case for us would be projects that deliver units that cost, that sell at about 600,000 and below. But we pressing developers to produce what we call gap housing which would be 450,000 and below. 
We also then have another facility which we call bridging finance to contractors. Now, in, in that category, contractors would be appointed by a department or a municipality to build houses in the subsidy housing, but they would not have the strength of the balance sheet or workflow um, cash flows to finance their project. What distinguishes Nature from other financial institutions? What makes you different from the rest? Banks and other commercial lenders are not geared to manage the risk the way we do. And therefore, our partnership uh, with, the, with the banks gives comfort to the banks that we are closer to the projects. And on our side, we are comfortable to take junior lender status where we carry a bigger risk, but that bigger risk and that small balance sheet we have leverages a bigger um, funding capacity from the banks. But they have the comfort that they can unlend that money because it's taken care of. And that's how we leverage funding from our uh, uh, private partners. And, and it, 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 it works well. What have been your biggest successes? We've enabled many entrepreneurs in the construction um, sector to have gainful participation in the industry and transform that industry. As a leader, I'm sure you want to leave some sort of a legacy. How would you like to be remembered here at Nature? If you respect that you, you, you've been given an opportunity and honor to lead an organization like Nature, you have to respect the stakeholders and the track record that it has set. And, and that, for me, is in line with our company values. It's pride, respect, innovation, development, and excellence. I'm sitting with Mr. Dean Goundin, who is Programs Manager for Affordable Housing, which is one of the projects that they have, as he tells us about the financial processes that happen before you get all of these benefits. Sir, welcome to BNG. Thank you very much, Jude. Dean, what do you do here at Nature? Um, Jude, I look after the affordable housing program. We take care of the emerging developers mm -hmm. and as well as the established developers that are involved in the residential market that sits in the price range between 350000 to 650000 This affordable housing, let's, let's break it down. What is it? You've got various different terms. People refer to them as charter housing. At the end of the day, it's, it, it caters for uh, purchases that, that, that sit in the market between uh, 9,000 to about, say, 20,000. There must be that one thing that, that maybe hampers developers to get to, or to access these funds easily. What is that one principle, what, that one main thing that you can say has been in their way or is a challenge for them to access? One of the main prerequisites in the affordable housing program is that the developer has to have a track record. Mm. And it becomes very difficult for emerging developers uh, to, to have that track record. Sure. What I advise uh, uh, the potential developers to, to do is actually team up with a, with, a, with a developer that has got the track record and has the ability to borrow. And, and, and hopefully, you know, you've been through your first development, you understand the pitfalls, you understand approvals and the delay of approvals could have on a, on a development. And maybe one other thing, your, your due diligence. How foolproof are these? Due diligence is, is extremely comprehensive. Okay. We, we start with the analysis of the property. We, we look at where the property is situated. What is, what is the demand in these areas? We look at a, a wind deed where we see the sales that have taken place, uh, what prices have taken place, how long it's taken to transfer. We, we, we then look at the town planning issues, make sure it's got the correct zoning, the correct uh, town planning associated with the development. We then also drill into the title deeds, we drill into the sale agreements, should there be a sale and transfer of land. Uh, we, we also work out the, uh, the, the project financials, we look at the cash flow, uh, is it reasonable, um, we look at the income that's going to be coming in, so it is very comprehensive. Dealing directly with developers at project level is the Nature's project manager. This person is tasked with the job of looking after nature's investment during construction. We spoke to Kabon Piano, who's project manager, to find out exactly what she does. Mboje, how do you like a project manager? How do you like a mutu mubi? How do you like a mutu audi? Audi, how do you like a mutu? 
Okay, project manager ke motho leng o reng o asesa di project gore o motho a go manage chalete ya go aga dintlo. Eh so that ba thwa gona o crea mantlo a mantshi mo mo South Africa. Ke dutse kwa ga e ke ana gana gore go ba lena nga ba project manager ke tlhoka eng gore ke ba project manager. Tshentse gore o ye university or o ye technicon we tutele ka construction management or we to the civil engineering, or we would do the quantity surveying mm -hmm. and financial management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, to Mantua Ariwa and then twenty kidra go officing Kihona one or okay, Slo Sanji Kisidra, Kisela Kua Savonarala. Hotra Matomon of Kilabat by Tena Monclu. King Lady Angor, no petes, Fubor, no at the bagging Kishumilia Mul. Kitaha Jacore, eh, Utanajur, all approve a project. Utsuor, okay, Chele take it, Yangi, Ekiva Fang, but to the developer. It low who are up a more nature. So, and at the same time, Utsuarore, it low funded the project changing or happy. So that but to Africa, Baba Leman to Amanchi. Because Rena Lebu Tata Waman, Rona Le backlog here over 2.3 million housing. So if Rona Araman to more than 30,000 in a short space of time, Rona accommodate about to Amanchi. Baga gets all only the challenges are on. Get everything down. The challenge is taken on the or Naki or Casa Sivaka, Kidila Lady Project is about 32. And the value of those projects is 740 million. So you have to think, or okay, Chelete is Hanji Ibuwe back. It's Kano Zamaya Fela is a boy, or a Hono or a Dradin Cloche So the challenge is that you have to monitor the developer. Because some of the emerging developers, the Sanjiki Ulele Banka, Eki Fetal Ule Bank account, their project, the Sanjiki Patele, the suppliers for Bona, so that the money can buy the material that is required, and then Bahono Ara. And then at the same time, to make sure they complete and the project is, is delivered successfully. Oh, okay. Hey, hello, Anna. A lot of work goes into financing these developments, which have quite substantial budgets. It is only logical for nature to do thorough risk assessment and taking care of their investments. After the break, we meet some of these people who live in these places. Welcome back to BNG. Linden Lane is home to Nondumiso Wandla. She rents a unit here in this complex. This is her story. Hello, Mama. I am a Nondumiso Wandla. I am a KZN Eshowe. I have been in 2008. I have been moving around renting. And I was a Clara, but this one for me it's very convenient for my workplace. This is my first daughter, so it is very challenging because M7 Zini gonna stress a corner that you need to work on it and then mufige kaya food. But I look in a corner, a uzam ugu accommodate mdanako. The complex, it's nice. Every place got its um, disadvantage and everything, but we're not gonna get into that. But it is nice and it is free. You can do whatever you want to do. And then in terms of space, because I'm just living with three people, so I just find it, it was going to be convenient for me. It is spacious because with the little one, she, when she was crawling, when she was doing, she was able to moving around and everything and I just like it. Everything in terms of shopping and everything, it's here. Mang Funugyo Sondwin is just up the road, it's one case. Mang Funugyo Shopping Mall, it's two case. So it is convenient, it, including going to work. Sometimes we, you, we also like to own your own stuff because renting is sometimes you use it as temporarily. But I will, that's my goal.
Clearly, the tenants here, Linden Lane, delight in calling it home. It is always a lovely thing to see an investment turn around somebody's life in a positive way. In Lilyfield, we meet Caroline Mufukeng, who's a first time home owner. in the Val. Been in Midrand from 2004. The first time I moved to Midrand, I stayed at Country View. From Country View to a few streets away from where we are now. And I was sharing with a friend, and there came a time where I wanted to be on my own. I moved to another complex a few streets away. From that time, I decided I want to buy property. I've been renting for too long, and that's when a friend of mine introduced this place to me. So I came and spoke to one guy who was an Asian and I did my offer to purchase in 2013, but the place was only finished this year. Kina Lengwana, a 10 year old. In my head, I used to think I cannot wait to be married to have a property, for a husband to come buy me a property. I need to do it on my own. I want him to have a home because at my mother's place, it's my home, not his. So he needed to have a home as well. That was my motivation to buy. The price, it was about 579. Looking at my finances at the time, I could afford. Filled an offer to purchase. They gave me the bond. I just moved in now in mid-July 2015. Look at this place. It's that uh, the rooms I think they are bigger than more kiduting before. He can put pictures on the wall without mommy screaming that, hey, this is not our home, you can't do that. There was a time Mo Nguana could not get space, Koskolo, when he started school. So I had to take him home to the Val, Alokena Skolo Koval, and then the second year I felt, ah, this is not working because we've always stayed together. So that was another reason I looked for a job around here and we, he came back the following year to do his grade two this side. And for me, it was bonus because I'm working in, in Midrand. He goes to school in Midrand. We're staying in the neighborhood. So it's about 10 kilometers to the school, to max, I think it's about eight. For me to come to work, it's about two kilometers. So that's a bonus for me. And I give Tulo Yakayapi as a homeowner, and it serves the need for now, but going forward, Kekarata will move out to a standalone house. More space, I love space, so I need more space. In total time, I bought a swimming pool, uh, enough space for Moana to go home. So let's say Moana, we plan to stay maybe for the next five years and then move out and find another place and then re-rent out because it is his investment. This is for him, it's not for me. And then I will buy my own house later. A house is an asset and indeed a legacy. It is something you put in your will as it can become a source of contention. Nature does not only assist businesses with finances, but they also give people places that they can have closer to amenities and well-serviced areas. For BNG, I'm Jutis Eber. See you next week, same time, same place.